Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 30 of Forget Your Warranty, the review series for the aftermarket spec tuner cars for the most part. A few non-tuners as well, there are some non-JDM vehicles in the aftermarket selection on Gran Turismo. That would include stuff like the HPA Audi and Volkswagen and a couple of others as well, but predominantly it is dominated by Japanese cars. Skylines, S2000s and a few Evos tend to be the name of the game as far as Gran Turismo aftermarket cars go. Now this particular vehicle is another incarnation of the Skyline because of course we just don't really have enough Skylines on Gran Turismo. I really wish that Polyphony would listen to us and add some more because the two or three hundred variants that we have just isn't enough. Now this particular car is very powerful. It's not as powerful as the production Nissan version though. That car has around 80 or so horsepower more than this one. So there's quite a big difference between the two. This car is still though running 883 horsepower, which is not bad at all. 610 foot-pounds of torque from a 2.6 litre, of course, turbo engine. It retains all-wheel drive from the production version, and the price tag is, yes, more than a normal Skyline, but not ridiculous. It's 125 grand, which means that in perspective, that is quite a bit cheaper than the Mines Skylines, and significantly cheaper as well than the Amuse Skyline, the Carbon R. Now, is this car better than those, or is it just a different take on tuning the Skyline? Well, it's definitely a different take to the Amuse Skyline. That's one of the most unique Skylines in the game. It's rear-wheel drive, it's lightweight, it's a time attack car. It's very much so a race-derived and race-purposed GTR. Whereas with the Mines, yes, it is a strong track car, but it doesn't feel as totally focused on track performance as the Amuse does. It may be a better car, but nonetheless the purpose feels different. Likewise with this car, this feels more like a showcase of what Nismo is capable of. It is of course the R-Tune version, which is a higher grade than say an S-Tune or that kind of thing, and with a weight of 1248 kilos, which incidentally is the same as the premium R34, you're looking at over 700 horsepower per tonne as a result of that, of course, combined with the power. The PP is, interestingly though, quite a bit lower than the Nissan production version. 618 is a lot lower, and that's interesting, because the R34 from the Nissan dealership, which, as we said, does have around 80 or so horsepower more, is around 648 PP. This is no way near that. 30 PP points lower is quite a big margin. So the question is, of course, is it worth buying? And if so, what's it good for? Well, in terms of straight line performance, and you're probably expecting this, but it's not as quick. Of course it's not as quick. For a start, it doesn't have as much power as the normal version anyway, but even if it did, the non-premium Skylines just aren't as quick in a straight line as the premium ones are. That's just the way the game is. And even normally, the Skyline isn't quite as strong for top-end performance as some of its rivals, actually. It's certainly no way near as quick as the Supra on Gran Turismo, and even the Mazda RX-7, with quite a bit less power, can get up to the same kind of speed pretty easily. Around the track, though, tends to be where the R34's dominance comes more to the fore. It's a car which is extremely quick in a straight line, and fantastic around corners, so it doesn't really have any weak points as such. It's not necessarily the best at everything, but it's so good at each individual thing that it makes it a very good all-rounder. One of the best, in fact. Now, with a price tag of 125 grand, the real question is, should you buy over the Nissan version? And as we mentioned earlier, what is it good for if you do decide to? Well, if you're looking for straight up value for money, I would still go for the Nissan version. This, as with many other aftermarket cars, is more a vehicle for fans. There's no real need to buy this car. It's more if you want to buy this car. There's nothing that this car can do that the normal version can't. 
but on the other hand there are definitely things that the normal version can do that this one can't such as the superior top end performance. So I would say that this car, although definitely not bad in any particular way, is a car which you should look into buying if you're a GTR fan, of course the R34 in particular, and if you want to have an alternate take on it, especially visually. You have some visual changes over the Nissan versions, the Mines versions also have their own appearance of course which makes them stand out a bit more so it's more that kind of machine the kind of thing that you pull out to be different or because you're a fan of the tuning company rather than necessarily because it's the best deal because the simple fact is it's not the Nissan is significantly cheaper and is faster overall now in terms of what it's actually capable of we've already covered the fact that it's not quite as quick in a straight line especially top end around the track the handling on pretty much all of the non-premium R34s tends to be not necessarily dull, but not quite as focused as the premium R34 is. And of course, being a premium car, they do tend to have better physics and they feel better to drive. That being said, the non-premiums don't feel bad, and this one feels very similar to many of the Nissan versions when you tune them up to similar numbers. So, if you tune it right, of course, it can fly around the track, it can be a great drift car if you want it to be, you can just have fun in it if you want to. So, it is definitely as versatile as a non-premium Nissan version. Is it better than the others, say the Mines version or the Blitz versions, for instance? Well, yes, I would say it is better than some. Not necessarily better than the Mines versions, because they are very good around the track, but it's definitely better as a track car than something like the Blitz Skylines, because they're just not designed to be track cars. So, as I said, it's a car for fans primarily, or if you just fancy trying something different and a little bit more exclusive. So, that's it for this particular episode. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.